we stand. Even in the physical, even some of the things that seem difficult, in the power of Christ, I stand. And yeah, what a what a powerful line and a verse that we can um, continue to meditate on, right? As we do the the unbelievable, the things that seem impossible on paper, but God works through us in all things, right? That's what the blood of Jesus Christ actually stands for. If you all went down, Amen. Amen. All right, so let me pray again for us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for worship. Lord, we thank you for your word, your truth, Lord, as we get into your word. And the book of James, Lord, speak to us, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit guide and direct the message and those things that we need to hear uh, speak to us, Lord. We thank you, praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so, so there was a, a couple that was um, going off in their at the 20th anniversary, marriage anniversary. They're getting ready to board a plane. And they got their boarding tickets uh, the night before, very early. So they're going to get there early. They wanted to get there quickly and make sure they got a good seat. And um, so they get there an hour and a half early. They're in the A seating. They're ready to roll in. And as they get in, they come to the ticket. You know, you scan your little ticket, maybe on your phone. But they had, like, the paper ticket. And they get in, and uh, they get held up. Wait a minute, we get to her early. I mean, just hold on, just wait right here. And then a little tunnel that you walk in and you get to the, and they're waiting there by the luggage and they're, they're, they have their carry-ons and they, they just like put your carry-ons right here. And then they see the A group go by. And then they see the B group go by and they're asking the flight uh, the attendant, hey, what's going on? You know, the, the, the line's piled up and they, they're boarding the plane. And she's like, you just wait right here, swear right here. The C group, you know, and they're, they're like, now they're grumbling, they're complaining, they're, they're telling one another, hey, we got here early the night before, we got, this, we got this flight, we want to enjoy, and then all of a sudden we're here, and what's the hold up? They're kind of angry, right? And they're like, let's just talk to the pilot, what's going on? And they're just trying to get the supervisor, they go back out of the tunnel and get the person at the front desk. Uh, they say, I can't help you, just stand there, wait. And so as they're waiting, the last group goes. And they're like, man, now we're... What do we do our luggage? You know, we want to, if you're like me, you want to have your luggage right above you, right? In that compartment and your carry-on. And they're thinking, well, now the carry-ons are going to be probably with the luggage that they take on the plane. And they wanted to get to their luggage quickly. And, and so their name's called Mrs. Er and Mrs. Jones. They call their name and they're to be seated. And so the flight attendant looks at their ticket. They look at their ticket. And lo and behold, the ticket says... First class. They're looking at it and they're like, what? What's going on? And so they, the sorrow and the mat and the anger turned to laughter and joy and very excited, right? And they're like, they sit down and the thing that they were complaining about um, turned out to, to be good. And, and they realized that sometimes waiting just isn't all that bad. Sometimes waiting isn't all that bad. It just all depends on kind of the lens that we look through in life, right? The title of a uh, sermon tonight is Patience. 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 So easy, but so hard, right? And today we're, we'll look at three points that will help us be more patient in our Christian walk. Showing patience shows Christian maturity, right? It shows maturity in, in, in our patience. And sometimes we talk about patience. We, we see the patience of the world. Mm, doesn't really look and line up. And sometimes we flesh out and we get into the world of the patience, right? You've got to really rely on Christ, right? And, and, and you see seasons of life um, in Christ and you see seasons of life before Christ. And how do you act with, with being patient with that thing you wanted yesterday? Like, <laughs> come on. I prayed long enough. Three minutes was good, right? Or even a prayer partner. And I even called someone on the phone, and they even prayed for me. I should have that thing, like, yesterday. And so God knows perfect timing. He knows, ex- he knows exactly when that time is. And so today, uh, let's take a look at, at God's Word, and let's open up to James chapter 5, verse 7 through 8. Who doesn't have a Bible or a Rubik's Cube? Go. Cool. Right Electric or paper. And so we're in John chapter 5, 7. 
and it's up on the uh, board as well, on the slide. All right, so it said, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until he receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And so patience... The definition looked up, the ability to wait without becoming hasty. And, and it's, a, it's kind of like godly exercise, God-given kind of gift to restraint from the opposition, not to be passively waiting, like on your rear end and hanging out, but actively waiting, moving forward in what God is instructing you to do, but moving in what he's instructed you for today to do, right? And when James wrote this, he was encouraging the church to, to wait patiently for the coming of the Lord. And over 2,000 years later, we we're still waiting patiently on the coming of the Lord, right? And so we still continue to wait. We continue, still continue to anticipate, uh, you know, the Bible talks about he'll come in like a thief in the night. We don't know. So we always have to be ready. In 2 Peter chapter 3, 8 through 10, it says, But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. We always are reminded that, hey, waiting it's not so bad. And here at Fit to Serve, we, we remind, I say it a lot, that the, the, the journey is much sweeter than the arrival. It's a kind of a, the journey, the nuggets that we get to kind of walk in. The arrival, sometimes we arrive, we think we arrive, and we're just kind of reading our own press clippings. We're just kind of like, hey, check me out. This is cool. Because you never really arrive when you're in the journey with the Lord. You never really arrive when you're in your journey of fitness. There's never arriving. Once you think you have arrived, you're going backwards. And so we see the, the great parallels, right, in the faith piece of our journey. And, and, and then the physical journey, no matter how good of shape you're in, there's always something that you're stretching forward towards and you want that like yesterday, Right? James talks about the, the farmer who waits patiently for his harvest to be ripened, right? They have to, to uh, have complete patience, waiting on the rains, which are really out of their control. No control, like, right? I don't think I'd be good at a, being a farmer. I don't know if I... I, lo- I love to drive one of those John Deere's, though. Wouldn't that be cool? An orange one? They're always green. An orange John Deere and just like... Rock that thing oh, in second, second gear with 5,000 RPMs like my car now. That thing would just blow up. So that would be cool to drive one of those. But man, having patiently the weight, like if you had a weight on every single day uh, of, of just knowing that that's your, that your harvest of what you had to wait on, that was going to feed your family, that was going to maybe carry it out through that quarter or that month. Uh, when we take for granted, we just, if the grocery stores are even closed, we can go to like a little convenience store and pick up that's our inconvenience right pick up some eggs at the, uh, at the liquor store or something that's you know we can pick up the things that we need who remembers that uh, you guys ever watched that movie Faith Like a Potatoes they were, they were, they were growing this potato, as a potato farm but it was they were praying for rain and rain and rain and it just never rained and it's, just, it's this Christian movie it's awesome it's a great movie but they just brought their family, their community, everyone together through that time because it was going to feed the, the community. It was going to feed their family. 
And so it was, it was important that, and, and it didn't look like things were coming through. And so that's what comes to mind when, when, I'm, when I'm thinking of, of a farmer. Some of you guys grow things. I know Coach Dave grows things, but some of us grow things you know, in, in plants or whatever you grow, you, you, you wait. And sometimes if you have, uh, if you're not growing things in a pot, but outside, you, there's seasons, there's season of growth, there's watering. Like sometimes we have the, the pleasure to th- turn on our, our sprinklers or our hose, but to wait on uh, rain um, is sometimes tough. But even us non Farmers have plenty of opportunities to develop patience, right? Waiting for the arrival of a baby, starting a new job, finishing school, waiting for loved ones to come visit us, maybe slowly improving, like we talked about, your your physical health or your spiritual health. All these help in testing our patience. They all help, right? In verse 8, it says, You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And we remember last week, or not, well, a couple weeks ago when we were in James 1 through 6, verse uh, 5 says, You have lived on this earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. He's talking about the rich man. He was talking about the ones that just... That's all they lived for. And here it is. Now he's talking about the opposite. So we should, we should always live with that, that attitude of gratitude, knowing that Christ is returning soon. Yes, amen. He's returning soon. And James encourages us to be rock solid in our faith and that we should be showing the world joy in our circumstances. Right? James talks about this in chapter 1. Verse 2 through 4, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Again, the farmer is at the mercy of the weather. It is out of his control. But we do know the coming of the Lord is near. The coming of the Lord is near. We see in fitness world outside of these four walls that people want their results like yesterday, like I said, but you always hear, it didn't come on overnight, so it won't come off overnight, right? You always hear this, but be patient, show consistency, and over time, you will see those results, whatever God is instructing us uh, to wait on. As we get more reps in, it gives us more opportunity to practice being more patient. Time under tension. Time of having opportunity to be patient. Um, Relying on the Lord and not relying on self. The more reps, the more time we get. It's like building that physical muscle. The more time you curl that weight or you squat that bar in your back, the same amount of Tearing of the muscle and build, tearing it down so you can get built back up, right? You tear the muscle down. People think they build the muscle in the gym. No, you're tearing the fibers. You go home, what you eat, how you prepare, how you sleep, your water. But the same thing with God. When he tears those, when you are going through adversity, you get torn down. Yes, amen. Then you get built back up when you rest in him, when you rest in his word. Not in just doing just foolish things and just kind of being busy with nothing, but spending like simple quiet time with him and seeing what he, how he wants to build you up in that thing you're being patient for. God cares about our spiritual growth and he knows how much we can handle. This brings us to our first point. First point is God's way is seldom the quick way, but it's always the best way. God's way is seldom the quick way, but is always the best way. Not always. It can be quick, right? Not always. But it's not seldom quick. You know, just look through the Bible and you'll see. <laughs> yep. And you'll, you'll see how long and you'll, see, you'll just see testimony after testimony. Just read through the Old Testament to New Testament. You'll just see great examples that, that God gave us 
for us to, to watch and learn. And, and we get to learn from just each other's testimony and watch and learn. Talk to your brother or your sister who is here in this gym with us and just, just listen to what they get to go through. And, and God may be speaking to you through, through them about their journey, what they're doing, what they're walking in. Isn't that crazy? And sometimes we're like, no, no, I'm going to show me something cool. No, no. Maybe it's just having an open air. And I'm speaking to myself because I'm, I'm great at talking. But man, listening? Wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, let's listen and see what God is. You know, it could be on the radio. It can be in here in the gym and doing something that had nothing to do with spiritual whatever. It could be on a, a walk, walking to that brick wall that you had a partner that you just got to know them better. <laughs> By a slow little walk a couple times, back and forth. Amen. Where, where would you have done that any time before, maybe? Verse 9. It says, Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. And when we face persecution from the outside, like trials, some, our relationships, work, finances, we then bring these, these problems to the inside of our business or our home and find ourselves grumbling, complaining, criticizing one another. We, we, things that we are being, that God is working through us, that we look and grumble and complain. In Philippians 2, chapter 14 and 15, it says, Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of the crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. So we refuse to grumble with another brother or sister in Christ is part of what it means to be patient. It's patient. This brings unity. Sometimes we, we talk. Sometimes we're, we're, we have more unity outside with our non-believers, and then we come and we have our brothers and sisters in Christ, and there's complaining and gum, grumbling and harsh words. And if we grumble about each other, it destroys unity. Right? It's the opposite. It destroys it. This also allows us to have the, that careless attitude of speech. Of what comes out of our mouth? Remember. Um, in chapter 3, J- James talks about the tongue, right? How, how damaged, how, 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 um, what God has used to build up and maybe in our relationships with people that in a second, what comes out of our mouth can destroy that. Oh my gosh, just burn that house down with those words. And, and we all have been there, right? Like, oops, why did I say that? And then, oops, what did I say? You know, and, and, and that takes practice. That takes patience. It takes when someone is like, and then we get to blame. And they're like, they just got under my skin. They said this and that. No, no, no. It's things that we're dealing with. And it's just an area where God has to work on with us. Right? We all, I mean, speaking to myself, I mean, these, these are things that we, we, we struggle with. And we need, we need each other to pray for these things that we battle with. Because those words, sometimes those words will... will be remembered for so much time. And most importantly, it can ruin our testimony in the future when God really has something for you to tell them or tell someone else. And so understanding and listening, we all have the Holy Spirit, those who are saved. That little small voice and tugging on your heart, hold back, don't say that. Maybe it's a walk, maybe it's going to the back. Maybe it's, hey, excuse me real quick, let me pray. And when you're talking and someone's saying something, you, you ever get to pray silently when that person's saying something, right? Lord, just give me the right words. Give me the patience, right? So you can pray right there. It doesn't have to be at a church or, you know, by yourself with, on, on your knees. Just right there speaking to the Lord. And then it says, the judge is standing at the door. Uh, uh, the end of verse 9. James mentions the great judge over in um, James 4.12. When we talked about it, it says, uh, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? There's only one. James warns us to, to not be in the middle of judging, gossiping, criticizing, or any quarreling, or any fights, or any 
bickering, right? And so point number two, this brings us to point number two. Patience brings unity. Patience brings unity. I got a good signal right there. Wow, I was off by 20 minutes. So here it is. What is the difference between unity with believers and unity in the world? That might be your question right there. Let's look at Philippians 2.2. 2. Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. All right, let's move on to 10 and 11. Verse 10 and 11. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who are endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen and, and, and intend by the Lord that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. James reminds us of those who went before us who did no wrong but suffered much. Even now, they did no wrong, but they suffered much. Today, it's still going on. If you're standing for Christ on the front lines, you may suffer much. We're, they hated Jesus. They're going to hate us. They're not going to like, especially where our world is today. Are you ready? Are you ready to take a stand? Are you standing up for righteousness or just standing up to whatever feels comfortable? And there's many of them. And over 40 years, Moses had to endure complaining and grumbling with the Israelites. Remember that? I mean, can you imagine being enslaved for over 200 plus years and then finally being set free? Then they, they, they grumbled and complained to God another 40 years. I mean, right? They, they wandered in the wilderness. They could have got to the promised land in 12, 12 miles, but... Because of uh, wanting to chase after their own desires, they wandered 40 years trying to find the promised land. The promise of generations, not them. Yes. <laughs> Great picture of our lives of, of coming to Christ. You know, I look at you know, being enslaved when they were in G- Egypt. Is that's in, you know, uh, we were in our, in our sin, right? And God used Moses to free the Israelites. They were saved. That's us being saved. And then parting the Red Sea, them going through the Red Sea is, is the baptism of it, baptism in Christ. And then the 40 years in the wilderness is us deciding to make God not just our Savior, not just saying I'm saved. But sometimes it takes us many years to say you're the Lord of my life. When does that take place? Some of us just say, hey, I got a free ticket. I went to an altar call. I am saved. And that's it. They sit under behinds and then they just wait. And it can be a 40-year wait if we don't get it right. And then the promised land, when they reach the promised land, is understanding God's calling in life and walking in it daily. Many other examples in the Bible that suffered that showed patience. We knew Jer- Jeremiah, the, the weeping prophet, was thrown into the mud of the empty cistern. Daniel was cast into the lion's den. So now James mentions one of the most patient, enduring people in the Bible. Let's read chapter, uh, verse 11. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassion, compassionate and merciful. We all know the, the story of Job. He was devoted and, and faithful to the Lord. He was very prosperous, happy, and joyful. Here comes the devil and suggested that Job was faithful because he was so blessed. He had all these things. If his blessings were removed, his loyalty to God would, would just vanish. Take these little blessings away. Let's see what happens. So the Lord allowed Satan to test Job. Remember, he lost his family, his health, his possessions. But in the end, Job still stands strong with his faith. And then again, the devil was wrong. We see in the end, the Lord was very compassionate and merciful to Job. Point number three, remember those who went before us. Remember those who went before us. We know that God always uh, has our best interest and we are never to blame God for the circumstances that we are in. 
we see so many times, uh, maybe other people, or maybe that was us at, at one time. God has given us many t- of testimonies in the Bible as great examples of patience as we see. Starting with what Jesus did for us. Wow, what a great testimony. As we have to, all we have to do is remember what he did for us on the cross. That will always remind you of his love, his patience dealing with us. Amen. The sin that we should have been held accountable to, but he took it for us. And in James chapter 5, verse 12, Last verse, it says, But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. James is now, uh, he's referring to Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 5, verse 34 through 37. Let's read it. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, for whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Believers should not need to have an oath, for their speech should always be truthful. There should be no reason for them to have to strengthen a statement with an oath. I swear, I, I promise. I, it, it should be our word. It should be who we are. It should be what we stand for. And so many times, I know in this, God speaks to us so loudly. I'm, you know, in there, I fall short so many times in these areas. You know, you, you make things up or talk about stuff and, and God speaks to us. Even in those things, right, that... Maybe just stretching and being careless with what you're saying. But God will judge our words. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about what people say. We can keep them accountable. But a lot of times it's a mirror right back at us, (laughs) being being careful of what we're saying. So as we close, today we looked at three points that will help us be more patient in our Christian walk. Number one, God's way is seldom the quick way, but it's always the best way. Number two, patience brings unity. Number three, remember those who went before us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for unity. We thank you for the patience that you had for us, Lord. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would just uh, continue to bless us as we walk in righteousness, those things that you are asking us to do, Lord. We just pray, Lord, as we get into your word, as we get into circles, Lord, that we would just, um, you would speak those things that you want to speak to us. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's turn our, our chairs towards